Hey guys, welcome back. Behind me is a 2004 Volkswagen Jetta that's hard to start after it sits for a couple of days. The customer said they had to put a rag over the exhaust and have someone crank it. So that's what I did to get it started. I tried cranking it numerous times. And the only way to get it started was to plug the exhaust up with a rag. So I've got the engine cover off and we're going to check fuel pressure, make sure that we're not losing fuel pressure and make sure we have enough fuel pressure. Okay, I've got the fuel pressure gauge tied in at the outlet of the fuel filter where the line comes over to the engine. It then goes across the engine into the bottom of the tandem pump. But we're going to check pressure here to make sure that the supply from the lift pump is good to the tandem pump. According to the service information, I should have approximately 13 PSI of pressure from the lift pump. If it'll start, we'll see how high we get. So it looks like we have about nine pounds of pressure, which is a little low, especially since this vehicle is under no load. We're just sitting at idle. So I have a, a fuel pump here. I'll show you guys how to replace the fuel pump on this, the, the lift pump that's in the tank. And then anytime you do that, you're gonna wanna change the fuel filter. So since the pressure is low on the lift pump, I'm gonna replace the lift pump, it's in the tank. There should be an access underneath the back seat. I'm also gonna change the fuel filter. Anytime you change the pump, you're gonna to wanna to change the fuel filter to help remove any contaminants that can get back in the tank, in the injectors. You don't wanna damage any of those fuel components. So even if you've done it recently, when you do a new pump, put a new filter in. The back seat's normally pretty easy to remove on these. We should just be able to pop it up, roll it forward. I'm not sure what side the access is on. It looks like it's over here, but I'm gonna pop both sides up just to make sure. Okay, so the access is over on this side. So I will switch places with you so you have a better view. There are three bolts or screws holding this access cover in place. I'm gonna yank them out. The cover will pop up. It has a little rubber seal underneath it. Now we can gain access to this pump. We wanna clean the dirt and debris around if there's a lot. This one has a little bit. I'm actually gonna grab the vacuum. You don't wanna take an air hose in here and blow dust all over the customer vehicle. Now we can unhook the electrical connector. Just push down lightly. There's a little tab here. While you're pushing down on the connector, lift up on the tab and then lift up on the whole thing. Comes undone without breaking it. These fuel lines are quick disconnect. They also have a push tab, but it's down here in the bottom. It's kind of hard to get to. Sometimes just grabbing a screwdriver. I'm just pushing with the flat edge of the screwdriver against that tab. And those are both unhooked now. Now we need to get this plastic ring loosened up. 
Some guys will use a chisel and a hammer. I don't like doing that on the plastic ones unless I have to because it can break them. So this is an adjustable fuel pump wrench. Um, this one's from Blue Point. I will link a similar one down in the description below. You just adjust these two jaws until they fit snugly on the plastic ring. On these, there's a couple of rings or a couple of lips that are shorter than the other ones. You don't want to put the tool on those because you won't get a good grip. And you can't spin this all the way around because the fuel lines are in the way. So once it's loose, you can reposition it. And we'll just keep doing this over and over until that ring is loose enough to do by hand. And then I'm gonna lift these lines up and position them off to the side. So I can get this ring and then the pump out. Now the pump is gonna have diesel fuel in it. So you're gonna need a container to keep from spilling diesel fuel in your car. And as we lift this up, we have to look to see where the lever is for the fuel sender because we're gonna to have to come out at an angle to get that to clear the opening. I'm trying to do this without spilling any. So this has a really big lever, it hangs off to the side. Let that drain for a second. Put it into a bucket and exit the vehicle carefully so we don't spill any inside the vehicle. So now I have a new gasket, this rubber piece that seals the uh, fuel pump to the tank. Sometimes if you try to reuse the old one, they're very difficult to get put back together because they swell up with the diesel. So you have to get this gasket kind of down below this upper lip before you install everything. And then we're gonna have to fish this float valve back in there. Then we can drop the rest of it in. And once you get down to this point, you're gonna get that gasket sealed on top of the tank. You just have to kind of fish it around until it sits flush with the top of the tank. Make sure nothing pushes that gasket all the way in as you're inserting the pump in. We're gonna easily work this pump down into there, making sure that the seal stays up above this level. You don't want the seal popping down in there. You'll have a diesel leak next time you fill up. And then there is an, a couple arrows here, one for the inlet and return of the fuel line. And there's another one at the back of the, back of the fuel pump here. It lines up with a little arrow on the top of the tank which happens to line up right with this bolt hole. So that is good. I can put the lock ring back into place. Make sure, I always spin it backwards a little bit because you don't want to cross thread it. Spin it backwards until it fits nice and flat and then start spinning it forward. You can go a little ways, and then we're gonna have to use this tool to reinstall it.
This pump came with two little protective caps on the lines. Pop those off and the lines should clip right back on. Make sure they're fully seated. Give them a little tug. Plug the electrical connector back in. I spilled a drop of diesel fuel on the, the body here. Luckily it did not make it to the carpet. Wipe that up before I put the cover back on so we don't have a smell. Now I'm gonna rest the cover over this opening, but I'm not gonna screw it down yet because after I run it, I wanna verify that there's no leaks on top of this tank. Now for the filter, there's an inlet, an outlet, an inlet, an outlet, and a return line. You gotta be careful, this had rubber caps on these two lines, but it's hard to see there's also a rubber cap down inside this return port that we need to pop out. So when you're servicing this, there's a plastic fitting here that clips down into the uh, fuel filter. That's on the return side. You just pull this metal snap ring out. Don't unhook the lines, just lift straight up on that fitting. And then we're going to remove the hose clamps and the lines from these other two ports. Once those are off, there is a single Phillips screw that tightens a clamp that holds that filter in place. We don't have to remove this all the way. We just have to loosen it up and it'll spread the bracket that holds the uh, filter. And then the filter should slide out the top. We can then set the new filter in place. I prefer not to tighten it back up until I know I have the lines in the correct orientation and everything fits well. So I'm gonna hook all the lines back up and you can still access the screw to tighten it down. On this return line, if we rotate this over slightly, there are two O-rings, a black and a blue, Two new O-rings came in the filter kit. So I'm just gonna use a screwdriver and pick those off. This filter was from Volkswagen, so the O-rings are the correct color. It's possible if you get an aftermarket one, it may have one black and one blue, or they mo both O-rings may be blue, both of them may be black. I'm just gonna put a little bit of assembly grease on the O-ring so it doesn't get damaged on installation. Make sure it's fully seated, reinstall the clip. And now we can tighten the filter into the support bracket. Now we need to prime the system because that filter is full of air. Now you can fill that filter. Some people fill them with diesel. Some people fill them with automatic transmission fluid just to prime the system. 
but that can be messy because you have to get a container of diesel to, to do it. So I'm gonna bump the key, see if we hear the pump run, see if we build pressure up. I'm gonna do this a few times to try and purge the air out of the system. I'm just cycling the key multiple times because the fuel pump will run for a second each time you cycle the key. And now that I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and start it up. It may run rough for a little bit while it purges the rest of the air out of the system. So I don't wanna rev it up. So now that it fired up, we're gonna crawl back here, lift up the cover, make sure there's no, there's only a tiny bit of diesel here, that's just from the lines. Don't see any leaks there. So now we can reinstall this, put the carpet back over, fold the seats down. We also need to check the fuel filter. Make sure there are no leaks up here on the lines. That all looks good. I'm gonna fire it back up and see what kind of pressure we maintain. So we're around 12 or 13. It's a little hard to tell on the gauge, but we are several pounds higher than we were before. I'm gonna go ahead and button this one up, park it outside, let it sit for a couple days, see how it starts. Make sure that it doesn't have a long crank time like before, where we had to cover the exhaust to get it to run. If you found the video helpful, hit the thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll see you guys next time.